those trains really managed to look pretty much almost full size, didn't they? And that's what's the beautiful thing about grand scale railroading. What is grand scale anyways? Well, that's what we're going to look into today. What's up guys, this is Heiss, and yes, today we're talking about grand scale railroading, the size between live steam and the full scale one-to-one -one locomotives. I've been really fortunate in the last year to get my first experiences with 7.5 inch gauge and 15 inch gauge scale railroading. And it really is scale railroading. The locomotives and equipment and everything that goes into making these trains function is absolutely exquisite and far from just a toy. Those of us in full scale railroading may be guilty of calling it cute or adorable when we see a shrunk down air compressor that works just the right way, just like a full size one, but the amount of work that goes into these things is absolutely incredible. And today's story is going to focus on the 15-inch gauge railroad here at Hillcrest, out in Reedley, California, of the Hillcrest and Watoki Railroad. The Hillcrest Railroad is located at the Hillcrest Christmas Tree Farm, which is actually the oldest one in the San Joaquin Valley. It was founded in 1960. That said, the railroad's been under work for the past 30 years, celebrating its 30th anniversary with this year's Reedley Rail Fest, where they opened the Watoki division of the railroad, adding a long amount of track to the run, a tunnel, and a huge bridge that's absolutely spectacular to see. We'll hear more about the Hillcrest Railroad in depth later in this video, and also later this week on the channel with a couple of travel vlog style videos shot and edited by my man Brett Weebold. But for now, let's hear a little bit more about what grand scale railroading really is from some of the folks who really do it. It's the gauges that are in between, that they're larger than seven and a half inch gauge, but smaller than 24 inch gauge. But it's so much more than that. They're not scale models, though some of them are highly detailed. They were actually built to do work whether it's hauling people from one point to another or hauling freight, they're small enough to be loaded on the back of a pickup truck or a trailer and hauled somewhere, but large enough to do what they were built to do. Grand scale is like having the larger version of the train running around the Christmas tree, except instead of a Christmas tree, it's the whole tree farm. Speaking of the whole Christmas tree farm, let's take a look at the overview of the railroad itself. You can see that there's three different reverse loops attached with a Y in the middle, including the new Watoki division that opened up in this year's Reedley Railfest. Overall, it's a couple miles worth of track with a fair amount of switches, a fair amount of operations, and there was a ton of different trains operating on the railroad during Railfest. It was a wonderful event to get to be a part of. The trains at Hillcrest are primarily five inch scale to the foot. That means that every five inches is basically one foot when you scale things down, and that comes out to vaguely a 40% scale locomotive. So these locomotives are actually scaled down narrow gauge locomotives operating on 15 inch gauge track. So they'd be bigger than standard gauge locomotives on the same gauge. Most of the locomotives that were operating at Hillcrest were local to the railroad itself, but several locomotives were also visiting from other different grand scale railroads. Of the visiting locomotives, they were of several different gauges. Some of them were 15 inch gauge, some of them were 18 inch gauge, and some of them were 19 inch gauge. So what really is grand scale? Well, let's hear about it from Greg Robinson, the man who ended up coining the term himself. Hey Mark, thanks so much. Um, I'm a huge fan of the channel. I'm really honored to be here. Grand scale railroading means more to me than I could probably really find words for. Um, like a lot of people, railroading runs deep. My dad for a short time was a student fireman and my grandfather was a conductor on the SP. He worked the Lark in the daylight and a lot of the name trains of, of that era. Um, my dad took us around to every railroad of every size you can imagine, from HO clubs on up to uh, standard gauge museums. But as you can imagine, as a kid, it was the scale trains that really resonated with me perhaps most, going to Train Town in Sonoma, going to the Redwood Valley Railway, up in the hills of the East Bay um, left such an indelible impression. 
And then when I was in my 20s, I had a chance to meet Frank Allen. And uh, he had built a gorgeous 15 inch gauge, uh, five inch scale, 440. And I went to volunteer with him at the fairgrounds in Orland, California. And I started to realize that the, the press, if you will, Model Tech Magazine and Live Steam Magazine, they covered large scale railroading. That's basically seven and a half inch, seven and a quarter inch gauge. Because Live Steam, as it started a uh, hundred years ago, uh, the hobbyists were building uh, much smaller size equipment, three quarter inch to the foot or one inch to the foot scale and trains that could be ridden on elevated tracks. Uh, and, then, and then from there, they called seven and a half inch gauge large scale. Well, I realized that, that the 12 inch, 15 inch, 16 inch, 18 inch, those gauges weren't covered so much in these magazines. And so I thought, well, maybe there should be a newsletter that that covered these larger gauges, both the scale equipment and the amusement park size equipment and, and style of equipment. So I decided to start a newsletter and I thought to myself, well, what what should it be called? You know, it's bigger than large scale. And so in the summer of 1997, it occurred to me to start a newsletter that I chose to call the Grand Scales Quarterly. And uh, it, it is such a thrill for me to see that, that label for this size of equipment to have been picked up and is now being used, you know, literally around the world. It's Greg. Hi, Greg. One highlight for our trip out to Hillcrest was to see the opening of the Watoki division of the Hillcrest and Watoki Railroad. It's an absolutely beautiful section of the railroad, and getting to see and hear everything that went into it from the folks at Hillcrest was really special. Now, when you guys came here before, at this location, you went straight through that way, and you came back straight through this way. Today, you're going to go that way. Every year I get people asking, when are you going to open that up? <laughs> when it's done. And uh, the problem is, it's, it's the most expensive part of the railroad. We don't know what the cost is per lineal foot, but if I were to wager, I'd say it's at least $1,000 a lineal foot all the way down to the bottom. It's the most spectacular part of the railroad. Um, I caution you, please keep your arms and hands inside the train cars at all times. Stay seated, you're going to go right through some narrow bridges tunnels and over a trestle that's going to take your breath away when you get there. Hopefully it only takes your breath away. <laughs> On three, one, two, three. With the first part of the opening ceremony complete, it was time for a parade of all the trains to run through down to the new station on the new division.
and grand scale to me has been a really big part of my life because it's opened up a lot of doors. The small stuff is a lot of people's first interaction up close with a steam train, and that's really important to me because that gets more people involved in the hobby and, and the industry. And a lot of our people have come in from little kids that just never went away and become people who are now running at big railroads and working on big important restoration projects. And I get to work on cool stuff through that as well. And so it's, it's important to keep these doors open for everybody. I think we're all just a little bit crazy in that aspect, but we all love it and we all love what we do. Sometimes can be used as a training tool because they're, to someone who's just getting into railroad preservation, they can be a little less intimidating and a little more manageable and easier to handle. I'm not saying these won't mess you up if you're not paying attention because they will, because these are real locomotives. Sometimes it's the gateway for someone for, to railroad preservation. And other times, once someone is hooked on grand scale, it can change the course of their entire life. You'll find stories of people starting on scale locomotives and then moving on to work on full scale locomotives all across the country. And me personally, I've seen many folks out here in Colorado doing that, including this gentleman right here, Scott. Scott was enjoying his weekend playing with a grand scale traction engine, a steam tractor rather than a locomotive, showing that the scale is more than just one dimensional. You got that Durango car? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, you guys aren't using it. Well, we brought it, you know, we had to supply some, uh, some fuel for the old uh, Sequoia Cannon Traction and Mercantile tractor here, number 17. That's cool. Yep. Yep. When was this built? Oh, I, uh, I, I think in the... Uh, Early 2000s. Okay, okay. Canada, yeah. And it was oil fired, but there was no atomizer valve, so it was all the color <laughs> pressuring there. So that, that, that didn't work, but uh, cool. So cool. She converted it back to coal, and we bought it a few years ago. Do you have a little mini pressure to go yeah, with scale, it? Scale pressure. <laughs> the problem is there's no corn up at Red Valley. So right. You need that little Indian, Indian corn, corn the, the scale right, corn. Yeah. But I think uh, Sean was going to plant some corn out here, so maybe in the coming years we can thread some corn by steam. Dope! Cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sweet. Dude, this thing is killer. Yeah. Now let's turn it over for you. It's nice that you could just reach around and grab the flywheel. <laughs> Off he goes on his miniature scale tractor. Off he goes. Looking for water. <laughs> the best part is that tractor is scaled to him. Who will win, a Shea or a much larger? <laughs> Gentlemen, start your engines. Get a head start, no way. When I was a little kid, I was one of those crazy little kids wearing the overalls of the wood whistle running around Thomas, you know, all over the place. And then later in life, I kind of you know, fell out of it. But then I got into it just a few years ago and I realized 
I want to be a part of keeping those childhood memories of mine going into the future, you know? And uh, then I was like, you know, I want to do that. I want to make it my career. And here I am making a go of it. So that's that's sort of what it is to me, you know, preservation for, for, for posterity, you know? That's what I'm into. Oh, and yes, they did let the three-quarter show have a go at running one of the locomotives. The number one commonly known as the one spot on the railroad, a completely wacky homebrew steam locomotive, a mismatch of all sorts of fun parts from a Stanley steamer engine, a whistle from South Africa, and a Johnson bar that was actually the firing valve of a cab forward. A completely wacky thing and a fantastic thing to run and experience. How's this work? <laughs> there's, there's, two, there's two methodologies for maybe out there. There's Riding in forward, or riding out forward, and then there's one rare person that rides facing forward, like sides. hitting their face. <laughs> there's no handrails. Everything's going to no be hot. Just reach out and grab it. It'll be fine. Well, that's facing forwards, and that's not brilliant. a goofy thing. <laughs> yes, precisely. It is a steam jalopy. Amazingly apt. It's delightful. Roger that. Can you hear now? Huh? Who? Spring switches feel gross. <laughs> With the amount of trains running on the railroad, it met for some interesting meets. We were going to have the siding to ourselves to get to enjoy running the locomotive back and forth, but we had to shove into a pretty tight spot in order to make clearance to let one of the trains on the main pass, which resulted in a little bit of fun. This is the first geared steam engine I've ever run. <laughs> Geared and chained. <laughs> that was close enough. Yeah. Long? I, think, I, think we're, I think we're good. We should be close enough. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's also the first equipment you've ever put in the dirt. Woo! Mark. Lordy. An engineer faced with a decision. Do I bin it? Trains for... must run, and the only way to keep schedule is to put it in the dirt. But that, that just sounds a yes and D perfect. I did not go in the dirt, I went onto the wood, okay? See, dirt undisturbed. Wood, fine. Yeah. 
chain by your left hand. Push the top one forward. Yeah, there you go. Now Brett's firing a cab forward. Valve at your left boot. Yeah, I've got to warm it up. Oh. <laughs> Class is over. <laughs> You need your propeller beanie for this. I do need my propeller beanie. We got to fire a cab forward. What's the attraction to it? What's the thrill? Uh, I think one of the things is, is, is purely the size and the weight of it. You get to ride kind of in the cars, not on top of them. Don't get me wrong. I'm a huge fan of seven and a half inch gauge uh, and, and the smaller scales as well. Anything with a flange thrills me but when you have the the large scale the seven and a half inch gauge equipment and it couples up it tends to make a clink tink sound when you have a five inch to the foot scale narrow gauge locomotive that couples up with that gondola behind it that that uh, weighs so much those couplers go ka chunk and you just have uh, a little more feeling of of mass of, of of the gravity of the railroading, and when you see these railroads operating with precise scale equipment, uh, a lot of times with uh, bi-directional running and 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 calling out calls from a dispatcher, it is just a thrill to see this railroading take place in in miniature, and it has been a great honor for us to have contributed to this community in whatever way we've been able to. So again, thank you so much for having me on. Keep up the good work. Grand Scale is more than a hobby. It's a community. It's a community of people who are passionate about what they do. Anyways, guys, I know that I had a ton of fun getting to learn about Grand Scale Railroading and learning what this community is really about. It really is a wonderful collection of like-minded individuals who are here to have fun with trains, whether they're big or small. And the groups of people and everyone at Hillcrest were absolutely fantastic. Thanks so much to everyone who helped present this topic with me in this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed learning about one of the most wonderful scenes there is, Grand Scale Railroading. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. We will catch you all next time.